Hello students, Mr. Waterman here for class 4-3's language arts lesson in period 5 on Monday, November 16th, 2020. Let's continue. So, we started reading Owl Moon last week, and we only got a few pages in. So for today's lesson, what I would like to do is I would like to read the entire story of Owl Moon to you, and I would like you to follow along, and I would also like you to please read along with me. This is Owl Moon by Jane Yolen, illustrated by John Schoenher. Owl Moon. It was late one winter night, long past my bedtime, when Pa and I went owling. There was no wind. The trees stood still as giant statues, and the moon was so bright. The sky seemed to shine. Somewhere behind us, a train whistle blew, long and low, like a sad, sad song. I could hear it through the woolen cap Pa had pulled down over my ears. A farm dog answered the train. And then a second dog joined in. They sang out, trains and dogs, for a real long time. And when their voices faded away, it was as quiet as a dream. We walked on toward the woods, Pa and I. Our feet crunched over the crisp snow, and little gray footprints followed us. Pa made a long shadow, but mine was short and round. I had to run after him every now and then to keep up, and my short, round shadow bumped after me. But I never called out. If you go owling, you have to be quiet. That's what Pa always says. We reached the line of pine trees, black and pointy against the sky. And Pa held up his hand. I stopped right where I was, and waited. He looked up, as if searching the stars, as if reading a map up there. The moon made his face into a silver mask. Then he called, Ooh, 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 ooh. The sound of a great horned owl. Hoo, 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 hoo. Again he called out, and then again. After each call, he was silent. And for a moment, we both listened. But there was no answer. Pa shrugged, and I shrugged. I was not disappointed. My brothers all said, sometimes there's an owl, and sometimes there isn't. We walked on. 
I could feel the cold as if someone's icy hand was palm down on my back and my nose and the tops of my cheeks felt cold and hot at the same time. But I never said a word. If you go owling, you have to be quiet and make your own heat. We went into the woods. The shadows were the blackest things I had ever seen. They stained the white snow. My mouth felt furry, for the scarf over it was wet and warm. I didn't ask what kinds of things hide behind black trees in the middle of the night. When you go owling, you have to be brave. Then we came to a clearing in the dark woods. The moon was high above us. It seemed to fit exactly over the center of the clearing and the snow below it was whiter than the milk in a cereal bowl. I sighed, and Pa held up his hand at the sound. I put my mittens over the scarf, over my mouth, and listened hard. And then Pa called, Hoo hoo hoo! Hoo hoo hoo! Hoo hoo hoo! Hoo hoo! Ooh. I listened and looked so hard. My ears hurt and my eyes got cloudy with the cold. Pa raised his face to call out again, but before he could open his mouth, an echo came threading its way through the trees. Hoo 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 hoo. Ooh. Pa almost smiled. Then he called back. Hoo, 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 hoo. Just as if he and the owl were talking about supper or about the woods or the moon or the cold. I took my mitten off the scarf, off my mouth, and I almost smiled too. The owl's call came closer from high up in the trees on the edge of the meadow. Nothing in the meadow moved. All of a sudden, an owl shadow, part of the big tree shadow, lifted off and flew right over us. We watched silently with heat in our mouths, the heat of all those words we had not spoken, the shadow hooted again. Pa turned on his big flashlight and caught the owl 
just as it was landing on a branch. For one minute, three minutes, maybe even a hundred minutes, we stared at one another. Then the owl pumped its great wings and lifted off the branch. Like a shadow, without a sound, it flew back into the forest. Time to go home, Pa said to me. I knew then I could talk. I could even laugh out loud. But I was a shadow as we walked home. When you go owling, you don't need words or warm or anything but hope. That's what Pa says. The kind of hope that flies on silent wings under a shining owl moon. And that's the end of our story. I hope you liked it. We're going to be working with an activity workbook this week and next week about this story, Owl Moon. What I want you to think about is, would you like to go owling? Now, I remember last week, many of you wanted to know why owling was a verb. Well, it's an activity where you go out to look for owls, kind of like fishing. Fishing is a verb. It's an activity where you go to catch fish. Would you like to go out owling out in the forest in the wintertime in the cold with your father? Or how about with everyone in your family? Think about that. Please take your time and reread the story by yourselves. Read it out loud. And if you have any questions or if there are any words that you have a difficult time with, write those words down on a piece of paper or in a special notebook, and then you can look up the meanings to those words. I'm available if you have any questions. I hope you enjoyed today's story as much as I enjoyed reading it. Take care, stay safe, be well, and talk to you soon. Bye-bye.